If you're capable, please get up out of your seat. We're going to have a little dance on. It is our last day of the seminar and we need to get the oxygen flowing because when we are getting the oxygen flowing, we put ourselves in a peak state. When we're in a peak state, we think a little better, we act a little better, and we put ourselves into an emotional state where we are able to respond instead of react. So, jump it up. on the back. You slayed six monsters in two days and then you also learned how to deal with four villains. Yesterday we shifted from monsters and how to slay monsters and learned about villains on the hero journey. Remember we spoke about the gang, the dream killer gang? Often those people are trying to protect us but they feed us a poison that actually kills our dream. Whether they do it knowingly or unknowingly, and it can really hinder our progress and momentum on our hero's journey. Yesterday, we spoke about how to identify those villains and how to choose not to take that poison because all that poison only leads to a setback in our journey. And what we can do now is knowing the tools that we've learned in the last three days, we can use those tools to overcome any monster we're going to face or avoid any villain who might want to crush our dream and stop our momentum. So today, I want to shift pack a little bit. Now, you'll see on the hero's journey, so you can go to part six. So your page in your workbook is part six, the reward and the road back. Okay, so we're talking about the end part of the hero's journey. Okay, and we spoke about approaching the innermost cave and identifying what that big, deep obstacle might be and how to, how to get advice from your mentors, even if you don't have direct contact with your mentors. How can you start to use the value that they've already put out in the world and apply it to your visualization, asking them for advice and applying it to the obstacles so that you can overcome them? Then we spoke about the switch technique yesterday, how instead of focusing constantly on the impossibilities, you can actually start fixing and coding your mind to always bring the possibility and the probabilities instead of the impossibilities to the situation. So what we did is the swish technique where you learned how to take a negative image that you've been focusing on and basically wallpaper over that with a positive outcome and a positive image that you want to happen. And remember, we spoke about the purpose of that exercise being that where focus goes, energy flows. And sometimes when we really don't want something to happen and all we can focus on is that thing not happening, it inevitably happens. And we wonder why. And we say, but why did it happen? It's because... We're so focused on it not happening that we unknowingly are putting energy and focus towards that outcome. And so I compared it to horse riding. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm a horse rider. And I said it's probably the quickest way to realize the power of your mentality, your mental state and thinking is because when you're on a horse, inevitably when you think you don't want to do something on a horse, the horse reacts to what your body is saying. So because you're thinking something, your brain sends a message to your physiology and as your physiology reacts to the thoughts that your brain is thinking, the horse reacts as well. So I spoke about when you don't want a horse to run, generally what happens is because you're in your head, you're saying, don't run, don't run, don't run, and you clench up and you lean forward and you pull the reins back. What that does is it sends all that physiology down to the horse and the horse gets this message that actually urges the horse to run. And then you think, oh, I didn't want the horse to run. Why is it running? And it runs off. Same thing in just directing your horse. So just like we spoke about the wheel of life and directing our car to the right future, it's the same principle on a horse where if you want to ride somewhere, you're riding towards your future and you try and look there, but ride there, it's really, really difficult to get to the right destination. And so you'll often hear riders and the instructors saying, look where you want to go. And when they're approaching a jump, you're meant to look at the obstacle, head straight for the obstacle. And as soon as you're in line with the obstacle, you're meant to look through it, not at it. 
and we spoke about how that actually is in direct correlation as an analogy and as an analogy to our obstacles in life our challenges is if we focus on them we have a much better chance in getting an alignment to get through them if we don't look at our obstacles and we pretend they're not there or we only allow them to show up or we only face them when it's too late it can be much more difficult to face that obstacle effectively and so just like in horse riding, when you're show jumping, you want to look at where you're going, look at the obstacle, get in line with it, and then look through it. Look at where you want to go, look through the obstacle, and don't get caught on what the obstacle is. Because when you do that, inevitably your horse stops at the jump, or on the jump, or the horse takes the jump in a way that's so uncomfortable that you can't, you can't stay the jump. So when the horse lands on the other side, you fall off. And so it's exactly the same in life. You want to look at where you're going. Not ignore your obstacles, but get in line with them and then look through them. And that is how we navigate our way through those challenges. Now, today, I want to talk a little bit about failure. Because as amazing as the tools are that I've taught you in the last few days, and they are, they're great, guys, and they're going to get you so far if you just start applying them right now. But, and it's a big but, I think a lot of us get caught up on the fear of failure. And unfortunately, the fear of failure is not a false expectation appearing real. Failure is very much going to happen. Even if you apply all these tools amazingly and effectively, failure happens. Sometimes failure is just because of unforeseen circumstances that hinder your progress. However, what I want to work on today is helping you reframe what failure is. Because if you think of it, failure has so many different levels. You can try something and not succeed, and that can be considered a failure, or you can never try anything and definitely not succeed. And that, I would say, is probably more of a failure. And in your heart, you would be like, that's even worse. Like, you know, and maybe, maybe you're on the other spectrum. Maybe you're saying, well, I think it would be worse to try and fail because then I've wasted time and energy and resources and I failed. And that's where the mindset comes in. That's where we really need to retrain and recode how we perceive failure. Because failure is only really failure when we accept it as the ultimate outcome. So if you think of it, Edison created the light bulb. And he, it took him a thousand and one tries. So it took him more than 900, more than 950 tries to get the light bulb. But instead of looking at each failure as like, or each each time that he didn't get it done, each time it didn't work, instead of looking at each of those as, as a failure, he looked at them as lessons of how not to create a light bulb. And that's exactly how we need to look at failure in our life, is when we are going forward for a goal, if we're going for a goal, we're putting our momentum and energy, and we're practicing all these amazing personal development tools, and something hinders us. It's only failure when we stop, when we get stuck in that obstacle. So you want to look through it and look at failure as this is a lesson to be learned. This is this is not just a dead end and the race is over. No, this is just saying I've taken a wrong turn, but what did I learn down this road? And if you can learn something from your failure, then it wasn't a failure at all. Then you become wiser, and when you're wiser, you're stronger. And when you're wiser, you're able to pay forward more information that other people on the journey might take the same wrong turn, and you can say, wait, hold up. I've been on that journey. This is where that turn took me. So either if you're going to take that turn, these are the lessons you should take along that road now, or don't take that turn. It's absolutely a dead end. Can you see how failure is not the end result? But if we choose to stay safe and we never risk and we never try, we will definitely fail. But if we take the risk and step into our courage zone, we have the potential to succeed. But as soon as we decide that, we're going to stop and not try. We've accepted failure as our fate. And then it definitely is something that can be all consuming. And failure is another one of those limiting beliefs. It's another one of those really heavy life debt cards, credit card swipes. And being that person that said, I tried something, it didn't work, and I'm never trying again. It makes you feel safe for a while. But later on in life, when you think, when you see everyone else around you moving forward and you feel like you're staying in exactly the same place, suddenly that choice to be safe doesn't feel so good anymore. And you start to get this high interest rates of guilt, self-loathing, and regret. And regret is heavy. One of my favorite sayings that I learned from my mentors is that you can have two kinds of pain. 
You know, you can experience the pain of discipline or you can experience the pain of regret. And the pain of discipline weighs ounces, but the pain of regret weighs tons. And isn't that true in life? When we've taken the time to be disciplined, even if we didn't see results instantly, but we took the time to be disciplined and we saw the rewards and it was a little bit uncomfortable. It took time, it took energy, it took willpower. And that that's not comfortable. Growth is painful. I think a lot of people also assume that the journey ahead to a brighter future is going to be this lovely, breezy adventure with unicorns and butterflies. It's freaking hard, guys. There are good days, there are bad days, there's challenges, there's villains, there's poison, there's monsters. You know this now. You know this now. But there's an immense pain that comes with the regret of not trying and then feeling like you're running out of time to achieve that thing. And I don't have, have any of you ever had this, where you've had a great idea, but you were too scared to take the risk, and a couple of months or years later, somebody else did what your idea was, and they've succeeded, and it burned. It burned deep because you were like, if only I had just done it then, when I thought about it, that, that could be me. That could be my success. Hands up if you've ever had that in your life. Yeah, I think we all have. To some extent, we've always had that thing of like, I'm not going to try. I'd love to, but I'm not going to try. And when somebody else succeeds in that thing, all we think of is, oh, I thought about this a few months ago, a couple of years ago, and if I had just done it then, this could be my success. And it's, it's that level of regret that you feel like, well, now if you did it, it wouldn't have such a big impact because now somebody else has actually taken the courage to do it. And you feel like you've given up on yourself and there's that huge guilt and regret of why didn't I just believe in myself just that much more? And that's the power of what you've learned in the seminar in the last three days. In the last three days, you've learned how to take that risk, but it's a calculated risk. It's not a risk where you're blindly leaping in with no idea on how to get through the obstacles. You know how to face those monsters. You know how to identify the villains that might poison your dream and how to deal with them. Okay. So let's reframe failure. Now, one of the other things, and please write this down because this is not in your workbook. One of the things we, we learn from our mentors is when you start down this rabbit hole of personal development and leveling up in your life, you're going to see that with all the amazing tools, the superpowers, the weapons, the strategies, every single mentor will tell you something very quickly. Befriend failure, but fail wisely. And so some of the mentors will tell you to fail, but fail quickly and get up faster. So jump in, let the failure happen, get up much faster and carry on going and learn the lessons. I learned another really great thing from one of my mentors where they said, if you fail, fail forward. Please write that phrase down. If you fail, fail forward. And I'm going to explain what that means. Now, if you fail and you stop, that's the end of your story. That can be deemed failure. It's like, I didn't succeed and I didn't carry on afterwards. If you fail, but you fail forward, it means looking back at the failure, so leaning into the obstacle. Remember, you want to get in alignment with that obstacle. So get in alignment with the failure. Understand where you went wrong, why you went wrong, what were the circumstances, what were the internal factors, so what was not right within you that went wrong, what was not right externally that went wrong? Write those down. Those are your lessons. What did you learn from that? How can you avoid that mistake happening again? And how can you pick up those pieces and move forward and carry on on your journey? That is the term. That's what it means to fail forward. That's what that term means. It means that you are going to fail. But make sure you fail with wisdom and strength and you don't fail with the stop end in mind, like the first failure and that's it. And you'll notice, if you look at some of the successful people, and please write this down because this is going to be your homework for day four. Look at the most successful people in the world, the people that are inspirational and that we admire, the Oprah Winfrey, the Tony Robbins, the J.K. Rowling, the inventors, all of them, all of them, even Einstein, all of them failed more than once. All of them failed more than once. And the reason that their stories and their lives and, and their being is so inspirational to us is not because they never failed. It's because they failed and chose to get back up every time, wiser and stronger and carrying on. They never lost sight of their goal. They had the goal, 
They just learned all the different ways not to get their goal until suddenly the path became so narrow that the only way left was this has to be the only way forward. And that's what happened with all of those people. Failure is not your enemy. Failure is your teacher. So on your hero's journey where you have mentors, okay, where you have mentors guiding you and showing you how to use your superpowers, where you have sidekicks supporting you, failure is the third person on your journey. And it's not an actual person. Okay, failure, I'm calling it a person, but it's a figurative person. Failure is the third person in your adventure team. Okay, and it's your teacher. It's the one that says, when you used all your superpowers, this is where you could have used them better. Or this is how you could have avoided having to blast everything out and kept it together. Failure is there as your teacher. So if you've got three people along your journey, you are the hero, okay? And the three people you bring along, your mentors who guide you and show you strategies and tools that you can use to better equip you for the journey. Your sidekicks who are there to motivate you when things are hard. And your teacher who's there to pick you up when you fall and say, this wasn't wasted time. This wasn't wasted effort. This was a lesson. And if you can learn those lessons, those are also the amazing things that you pay forward when you succeed in your goal. Those are the things you can pay forward to other people. These are the failures I had. And I must say, guys, hands up if you felt like sometimes you're looking at people's success stories. And although they're inspirational, what's scary is you don't see their failure. And so you wonder how they did. And all you can focus on is it's their success. I think all of us have had that, right? Where we look at them, we're like, but I wish I knew your journey a little bit more. And the more we start to talk about our failures, the more we help each other. Because... Going from zero to hero is not real, guys. Remember, this is a hero's journey, not a hero's leap. And we, when we hear that story, zero to hero, it's not true. That hero had to go through a really tough journey, a lot of failure, a lot of heartache, a lot of challenges in order to become that hero, in order to come back and return as a mentor to other people who are ready to step into their courage zone and take their hero's journey. So, guys, that is reframing failure. Now, Talking about failure, I've equipped you with personal development tools to slay monsters. I've equipped you with identifiers to recognize the villains in your story who might be feeding you poison. And now I want to equip you with the elixir. Okay. This is like your breaking case of emergency potion. So it's not something you want to fall back on all the time. Because you don't want to get used to putting your state, yourself in a state of panic. But mistakes happen, failures happen. So this is your break in case of emergency. So on that part six, first page for today's workshop, there's a sec, there's a third bullet that says develop a plan to maintain progress. Now we've got smart goals. We've got the how we're going to achieve those smart goals. We broke that down. We've got the why. We've got the drive. Now we are going to work on something, please write this down, called a crisis plan. It's your break in case of emergency. And it's when you are strong on your path, you are slaying monsters, but unforeseen circumstances halt your progress. They come down like a boom gate and it's just like, stop. Okay? That can often be the time where we're like, I need to give up now. When you feel like that, we are now going to create your crisis plan and give you a step-by-step -step guide on what steps to take when you don't know with what to do. When you've done all these exercises, you've done all the tools, you've done all the talking to your mentors, and you've just hit the dead end and you're like, I simply don't know. Like, I'm overwhelmed and I'm, I'm lost. This is your crisis plan. I'm going to work on now. So, get ready. Please have a pen and paper ready. Although there is space at the bottom, I recommend just having an extra extra piece of paper ready because you're going to write a lot, I think. Sit with as much authority as you can harness in your body. And I'm going to ask you to close your eyes in between questions. You're going to ask your brain questions. As soon as your brain gives you answers, please write them down. And then go back to closing your eyes and wait for the next question. So, you're ready. We're going to work out your crisis plan now. So, at the top of your page... You can either write crisis plan 
or you can write break in case of emergency. Okay, so this is your emergency plan. So the first question is, who are my dream growers and where will I find them? Who are my dream growers? We spoke about dream killers yesterday. Now a dream grower is somebody who, when you tell them about your dream, they give you enthusiasm and ideas and strategies. So you'll find them in private Facebook group. You'll find them where your mentors are. You'll find your dream growers in your mentors and your sidekicks in your community that is supporting you. So who are your dream growers and where will you find them? So ask your brain, who are my dream growers? You can mention a couple and where will I find them? Now you can mention actual people's names or if you want to mention a community like the Monster the Mentors community, the TBM community, whoever that is for you. Who are my dream growers and where will I find them? Write your answer down. The next question. Close your eyes, take a nice deep breath. Just go back to neutral. Ask your brain the following. Am I facing a monster or a villain? Okay. So when we're talking about this, before you have an answer, I'm going to explain this step to you. When you have a crisis and you break in case of emergency, and I'd like you to write this question down, because this is what you're going to ask your brain. And if you can think of a challenge or an obstacle that you're facing right now, if you're in the state of break in case of emergency right now, then I want you to answer these questions right now. If you're not in that state, and you're just here to learn today, then write the questions down for when you do have an emergency, when you do have that crisis that you need to plan for. So these are your action steps. If you want to write a heading called action steps, you're more than welcome to do that. So action steps for a crisis is, the first question you'll ask is, am I facing a monster? Am I facing a villain? The reason you want to ask your brain this is, remember, Understanding who a villain is means simply avoiding sharing too much information with them and finding a better community. If you're facing a monster, you've got tools, strategies, weapons, and superpowers that you've learned in the last three days that you can apply immediately. If it's an overwhelm monster, if it's the limiting belief monster, if it's the frustration monster, if it's the low energy monster, the how monster, the why monster, any of those, you've already got the tools and how to slay those monsters. So being able to say, I'm feeling overwhelmed and I'm feeling like I'm lost, I'm confused, I'm facing something that doesn't feel right on my journey, being able to pause, close your eyes and ask yourself, is this a monster or a villain? Have I simply shared too much information with someone? In which case, answer is very simple. Just, just take some distance from them. Or is this a monster that I need to deal with right now? So the next question you're going to ask yourself is, can I slay this monster with the tools I currently have? Okay, so you'll identify one of six monsters. Can I slay these monsters? Your brain will say yes, and all you'll need to do is go back to this workbook, come back to the recordings, say, ah, that is the monster I'm facing, and this is how I deal with it. Okay. And then the third and most important question, Do I need a sidekick to help me with this crisis? Do I need a sidekick to help me with this crisis? So that's when you'll hop onto your community or hop onto the phone with three of your mentors or one of your three mentors and say, I need help with the specific obstacle that I'm facing. I need your advice. Okay? If you don't know your mentors directly, you know the drill. You're going to visualize sitting at a table with them and get advice from each of them one by one. See the common thread in the advice. And that is the action step that you need to take. Okay. okay. Now, just write under all of those questions. Okay. Under all those questions, you're going to write down physiology. Okay. All those answers and questions you just did, just write down physiology. Now, the biggest thing about dealing with chaos, as you know, is putting yourself in an optimal peak state. If you're trying to handle a crisis and you're overwhelmed and you're panicked, 
you're not going to handle it well. That's why these steps are there. So it's about putting yourself in a peak state. So before you even ask these questions on where to find answers, the first thing you're going to do, write this down. It is not in your notes. You're going to stop, which is probably the hardest thing we can do when we're in a panic and we're overwhelmed because we just want to solve it right now. Here's the thing. If there is a crisis, and it's a real crisis, nothing is going to change in the next 30 seconds. And in 30 seconds, you can breathe. Okay, so it only takes 30 seconds to take a deep breath, breath in, hold it, let it out, change your physiology, and think. Only when you've done that, only when you've taken a deep breath, stood up, Put your shoulders back and even stand in the superhero pose for a couple of seconds and you're in a better state. Then can you start asking yourself the crisis plan question. Okay. If the crisis plan okay, is there for you and you have a little bit more time to think, let's say you have 24 hours, first thing you want to do is really focus on putting yourself in a peak state. That means movement, taking a walk, visualizing, doing the switch technique, and then going straight into your action steps of your crisis plan, which is, what am I facing? Okay, so what am I facing? Who are my dream growers? Can I slay the monster right now? And do I need a sidekick to help with this obstacle? Guys, this is your, right, put a little cloud around it, put stars around it, colors in. This is your crisis plan. And I know you're probably looking at it and thinking, but it's so basic. That's exactly the point. Okay, complexity is the enemy in terms of execution. So complexity is the enemy of execution. When we make something so complex, if I gave you 20 steps to solve a crisis, when you are in a crisis and you're panicked, the last thing you need is a 20-step guide on how to solve the problem. That's like reading a manual, okay? No one wants to read a manual. You want to have a tool right on your sleeve that you can say, physiology, who are my dream growers, can I slay this monster? Do I need a psychic? You want, if you can't fit it all on one hand, if you can't fit the steps on one hand, the crisis plan is far too complicated. And so that is why it's so simple. And this is your break in case of emergency. Again, you don't want to do this for every obstacle. Sometimes you want to try and face the obstacle on your own if you can with the tools you have. It's only once you've applied all the strategies and tools that you've learned in Monsters and Mentors in the last four days and you've applied it and you still are coming out with zero results only then do you say this is a crisis and i need help okay great so moving on i want to share something really special with you so this is not in your book this is a bonus for today and what this is is this is one of those secrets to living a fulfilling life so hang up if you've been trying really hard in your life you've been working really hard and you feel like you're trying and trying and trying but nothing you do feels like it's giving you enough passion and purpose in your life like you're surviving but you know you're not thriving hands up if that's you put your hand up they pull out that's it okay so we have something in our soul it's a series of ingredients that we need as a human being in order to unlock our potential to living a fulfilling life, okay? It's broken into two categories. The one category is identity, okay? So the one category is our identity, okay? So it's like a personality, identity, so identity. And the second one is spiritual, okay? Now, those of you who are non-believers in anything, that is totally fine. This is not a religious or spiritual tool. It's not a religious or spiritual tool, so you don't have to worry. Nothing like that. This is simply a personal development tool. And if you want to use something else for the word spiritual, that's absolutely fine for you. I like to use the word identity and spiritual to break the two categories. So what I want you to do is take a fresh piece of paper, fold it in half for me, lengthways. So lengthways, fold it in half. Okay? And then you're going to fold it in half horizontally. So you should have four quadrants. Okay, so in those four quadrants. Now, in the top two quadrants, I want you to write the very top. The first one I want you to write is identity, and the next one I want you to write spiritual. In the first quadrant where you've written identity, 
I want you to write the following words down. Okay, write the following words down. Now you're going to say certainty, variety, okay, significance, love and connection. Okay. In the second quadrant where you wrote spiritual at the top, I want you to write these terms. Personal growth is the first one. And the second one is contribution. Now, what these are, these are the ingredients that we all need in certain ratios to make sure we're living a fulfilling life. Now, the identity elements, okay? Certainty stands for, it's the amount of security we feel we have in life. And all of us need a sense of security. When things are completely uncertain and volatile in our life, we feel overwhelmed. It's very scary. And it doesn't make us feel like we can move forward and we'll we'll panic, we won't be in a good emotional state. And so too much uncertainty doesn't make us feel good. So we need a certain level of security. Okay. And we might need that security in different areas. Some of us prefer security in finances, some of us prefer security in relationships, some of us prefer security in our home, our living, whatever it is. But across the board, on our wheel of life. There is a certain amount of security and certainty that we need. Okay. The next one you'll see, I said variety. Because now imagine if you had so much certainty and security in your life that you knew everything that was going to happen, how it was going to happen, when it was going to happen, every second of every day. Suddenly things would be really boring. Am I right? Like if you knew everything that was going to happen, when, when, how, when, where, how, and it was like, there is no guesswork. You wouldn't be able to get excited about anything. So we also need a level of variety across the board in our life, across all aspects in our life. We do need a certain amount of variety that spices life up a little bit, that gives us a little bit of a, oh, that's exciting. I didn't see that coming. There's a certain level of variety that we need in order to keep the excitement and joy in our lives, that excitement of what's going to happen next, okay? And we do need that. The third one I asked you to write down was significance. Now, significance is our feeling like we belong in the world. It's that I'm making a difference here. Okay, so your significance is like that identifying what's my what's my unique me? You know, what is significant to me? What makes Jess Jess? What makes you you? So what about you is like significant? It, it's boosting your significance in the world because the 8 billion people on this planet and sometimes that can make us feel really lonely. It's the weirdest thing. It's like there's so many of us but if we don't feel like we hold a certain amount of significance in this world, we feel like we don't exist at all. How scary is that? So if that's you, understand that there is nothing wrong with you. That actually, what's happening is we all actually have that need. And again, if we have too much of that, we might come across as arrogant. You know, if we've got too much need for significance, we can selfish and arrogant and maybe narcissistic even. But we do, all of us, we need a certain amount of significance that makes us feel like we are important on this planet, like we, we're serving a purpose to be here. Like there's something about it that we bring to the table of world. Okay, and that forms part of our identity fulfillment. And then the next one is a love and connection. So I asked you to write down love and connection. Now, Although I asked you to write them down as one term, so like love slash connection, they're actually very different. Okay, Believe it or not, most people in today's society, because people aren't going on hero's journey so readily, because they don't have the tools that you have, they don't have the tools that you've learned in the seminar, most people are trying to live safe. And when you're living safe, it's far easier to create connection with people than it is to create deep, meaningful love with people. Now, why am I saying that? Because here's the truth. True love, and I'm not talking about the Disney version or the princess version or anything like that. Talking about genuine, hardcore love takes vulnerability from both sides. Both people need to be willing to be absolutely vulnerable and open to being hurt in order to understand what true love really is. Because true love is opening yourself to the absolute risk and probability that you are going to be hurt, you are going to be disappointed, but knowing that you're still going to have that love at the end of the day. 
that's true love. That is really difficult to find in today's society because most of us are really scared. Most of us are so scared to put ourselves emotionally out there for fear that someone's going to take love away from us. Like if we show them our real self, our deep and dark secrets, they're going to take love away. And that fear of not being enough often leads us to building relationships based on connection. Now, connection is very simple. You and I have a connection right now through the screen. It's engaging with humankind. And you can have a really deep engagement with somebody without being completely vulnerable with them. And so that's really, really important to remember that even if you are in a relationship, ask yourself the question right now, like, I am in a relationship, but am I comfortable to be vulnerable? And if you don't feel like you've got the space to be vulnerable with, the, your, with your intimate partner, there's some work to do there. If you are on the other side of the screen right now and you're like, I'm an introvert and I don't like socializing, that's fine. You can be an introvert and not like socializing, but at some point you feel the need to engage with another human being, whether it's through gaming, through social media, through a phone call, through a meal with somebody, watching somebody on a screen so you can hear a human voice and see a human being. On some level, all of us need an, a certain amount of connection and love to feel like our presence here on earth is wanted and like we are seen, okay? So a little bit different to significance, it's about being able to know that we're bigger than just ourselves and that people are aware of us. People are aware of our life. Okay, so that is essential. So all of those, so those four, they make up our identity. And depending on the ratio that we need them in or the ratio that we put energy into those needs, that affects our personalities. So sometimes when you meet somebody and you're like, I just don't get along with somebody, there might be nothing wrong with that person and there might be nothing wrong with you. The difference is that you prioritize your identifiers a little bit differently. So where they may be totally after significance and they want to like be known and they want their name to be famous, you might be totally after variety and adventures. You're like, I couldn't care less about people knowing my name. I just want adventure. I want to travel. I want to experience things. And so your personalities might clash. And can you see it's just as simple as your identifiers just might be prioritized but differently. Now, heading over to the other quadrant where we wrote your spiritual needs. Okay, now, again, this is not a religious thing. It's just I'm using this terminology so it lands for you and makes sense. If you want to change the wording so it lies better with you, go for it. But now, your spiritual needs, they are like the things that you need to feed in order for your soul to feel fulfilled. So... In our spiritual quadrant, so our spiritual needs, what those are is those are the things that feed our soul. So if you meet somebody or if you're the kind of person who feels like in the identity categories, you are like playing full out and prioritize them in a way that's making you very vibrant in life, that's great. But if you've ever felt like you're doing everything you possibly can as a human being, but no matter what happens, you don't feel like you're living life with purpose and passion and fulfillment, it often comes down to where these spiritual needs are placed on your hierarchy. Okay, so personal growth was the first one. Personal growth means the time and investment you're putting into elevating yourself. It's coming to seminars like this. It's making sure that you are reading or learning new skills or putting yourself in a courage zone where you are developing yourself as a human being whether it's by skills or personal development or just understanding and communication, whatever it is, okay? We all need a level of personal development. Why? Going back to that thing that we said at the beginning of the seminar, when we don't grow, when we're not growing, we're dying. When we're not moving and gaining momentum in who we are as a human being, we become like still water. Still water becomes stagnant water. Stagnant water grows bacteria, grows gross little creepy thingies, and it smells bad and nobody wants to be around stagnant water. It's not safe to be around stagnant water, okay? Stagnant water can kill us. And that's exactly what we become when we stop investing and putting energy and time and focus into personal growth. When we focus all our energy into our career or to people pleasing and we don't focus enough on elevating ourselves as a human being, we, we get a lack of identity. So that's where we look at all the amazing things we've done for other people and how other people might appreciate us and boost our significance. But we look at ourselves and we think, 
I don't feel like I'm living up to my full potential. And there's that lack of identity where you look back and you think, I don't even know what my favorite color is. I don't know what my favorite color is. I don't know what my hobbies are. I don't know if I'm good or bad at anything specific. All I know is that I'm a good people pleaser. And so that loss of identity comes down to your personal growth. So you want to make sure that no matter where you are in life, even if you're excelling in your career, that every week you're putting even just 10 minutes aside to improve yourself as a human being. Okay? Now, contribution was the next spiritual need that I asked you to put in that second quadrant. Now, contribution is what we put back in the world. Here's the, here's the trick, though. Some people get confused by boosting their significance through contribution. Now, it does kind of work twofold because when you contribute, a level of significance does happen because you feel like you're doing good for the world. However, if you're contributing with the sole purpose of making yourself feel significant, it's not real contribution because that's self-serving. It's motivated through self-service. It's like, I'm only going to give money to the beggar because I will feel better. Not the fact that it could actually make a real difference in that person's life. Okay, so it's how you prioritize that contribution that matters. And giving selflessly, being able to say, I'm giving this to you because I want you to find value. I want you to grow. I want you to have a better life. Just because I can do that for you, I'm going to give that to you. That will automatically feed our significance, but when our motivation is for the other person, to make the other person's life better, that is contribution. Now, contribution means giving without expecting anything in return. It's giving without wanting somebody to give something back to you. It's being able to do something for somebody. People pleasers, I'm talking to you. It's wanting to do stuff for other people without expecting them to praise and thank you. And when they don't praise and thank you, not resenting them for not recognizing the effort you put into people pleasing them. Okay, so remember that. Now, where a lot of people get confused is we focus so much on that first quadrant and getting those things in the right amount. And I promised you a secret key. And here's the secret key. Please write this down. It's not in your workbook. This is a bonus for you. The quickest way, the quickest way to balance the identity categories, the certainty, the uncertainty, or the variety. So your certainty, variety, your significance, and your love and connection. The quickest way to balance those things out that usually end up making us panic and feel overwhelmed and lost and have a lack of identity, the quickest way to balance those out is to switch the two quadrants around and prioritize your spiritual needs first. I'm going to break this down. I'll explain it to you. But it's to put personal growth and contribution first. Because naturally, when we do that, it naturally overflows into our, our identity categories and it balances them out. There's what? When you are investing in your personal growth, and I'm talking money, time, energy, love, focus, when you are investing in your personal growth, okay, you're creating a certain amount of security and certainty in who you are as a person. That's the first one. Because you're learning new things and you're putting yourself in your courage zone and expanding what you know already or something you don't know at all, and you're expanding on yourself, there's a level of variety that you're feeding, okay? Level of variety that you're feeding. And because you are growing yourself as a human being, there's a positive amount of significance that is feeding into your significance identity where you can say, I feel better about myself because I am growing myself as a person. And when you grow yourself as a person, when you invest in your personal growth, you will connect with people and find your tribe so much easier because you will have a strengthening in your identity that you will know exactly who you need to surround yourself with. And so love and connection happens almost automatically. Automatically. And exactly the same thing happens when we prioritize contribution. As the very next thing, or you switch the two around. So you have personal growth and contribution, or you have contribution and personal growth. Contribution, another spiritual need, does exactly the same thing. When you're contributing to the world selflessly, you're creating a certain amount of certainty in your capability to make the world a better place. You're creating variety in your life because you're learning what impact 
it has and it's different and you're meeting new people and you're learning how you can contribute more and add more value to the world. So there's a level of variety that in the challenge of how are you going to contribute next. And then, of course, when you contribute selflessly and you see the impact that it has on other people, you naturally gain a positive sense of significance. Not that you want praise, not that you need everybody to know what you did. You feel good about what you did. And it adds to that identity of significance of, I know who I am as a person. I'm the kind of person who just wants to give, whether or not I get praise or acknowledgement from it, it makes me feel good. And so there's a positive sense of significance that comes from that. And of course, when we are contributing selflessly to other people, we ignite an energy and a spark in humanity that helps us create love and connection with other people in the world. And so can you see by just switching over to focusing and prioritizing our spiritual needs, our identifying category that really confirm who we are as human beings and will contribute to how fulfilled we feel, how purposeful we feel, and how happy we feel in our life. All of that comes from prioritizing our spiritual needs above our human identity needs. And what so often happens when we're feeling caught up and like we can't keep up with the world, we're feeling like the world's just knocking us over the head, what often happens is you'll find you're focusing and prioritizing too much of your identifying needs and not enough of your spiritual needs. And so, in the spirit of that, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. I'm going to put some music on, okay? And what I'd like you to do is really look at these first and then close your eyes and slowly ask yourself, how are you prioritizing all six of these needs? So if you clump them in one category, how would you say in your life, the way you've been living, okay, and the way you think of yourself and the way you've been living, the decisions you've been making, the actions you've been taking, how are you prioritizing these six human identifiers, these six human needs, these core elements and ingredients that make you who you are and make you feel fulfilled and like you're living with passion and purpose? How are you prioritizing them now? Ask yourself, honestly, I'm going to put it music on for like two minutes. And I want you to honestly write down from one to six, which needs you're prioritizing from highest to lowest category. And then we're going to come back.
welcome back, guys. Okay, so what you would have discovered is that you've got a prioritized list now of how you have been prioritizing, okay? And now you also have an idea of how to improve that prioritization. So I don't want any of you, if you are looking at your list now and you've put significance at the top, please don't feel guilt or ashamed of how you have been prioritizing these needs in the past. All these decisions you've been making, they are your natural survival instinct. And you can't change what you don't know. This is why I'm telling you this, because once you understand that these six things, these six, these six things and how you prioritize them, that directly affects how passionate and purposeful and fulfilled that you feel in your life. That's what it affects. And as soon as you learn the correct way to prioritize them, and there's no solid way to prioritize them, okay? Each kind of prioritization will come with its own set of side effects. You know, when we are focusing a lot on personal growth and contribution, we may feel like we're not focusing enough on our relationships and love and connection. Naturally, we will create balance and you'll learn that by prioritizing your spiritual needs first, it will be much easier to manage your identifying category. Okay, it becomes so much easier because you realize that most of us get hung up and caught up when we are focused too much on one of those identifying human needs instead of our spiritual needs. Why is this essential? Why is this essential? Well, the great thing about this is I told you that you need all six of these to some degree. All six of these to some degree. Okay. One of the ways that you know a goal is meaningful and a goal is going to mean a lot to you is when a goal consists with all six of these elements, and you'll find that your smart, specific goal that you wrote down will provide you with a level of certainty. And the new reality you're going to create for yourself in the journey you're about to go on creates a sense of variety. And being able to go on that journey and measure your progress and get excited about achieving each of your five increments of measurement, that gives you a level of significance. And as you go along this journey and you meet your mentors and sidekicks and you create a community for yourself that is there to support you and help you succeed, you get love and connection. You get a space to be vulnerable and you get connection with people who are happy for you to show who you really are. And you'll find that by achieving this goal, you'll grow your personal growth because you are committed to your journey. So your personal growth goes up. And when you have all five of these things, you'll become a mentor and you'll be able to share with others how you did it and what you learned and how they could do the journey better and faster, taking on the lessons that you learned on your journey. And so naturally, you will fulfill the sixth human need, which is contributing back. It's paying it forward. Isn't that amazing? So any good goal should make sure that it touches on all six elements in order for it to make you feel fulfilled, and purposeful and happy and ignited and that is what affects our quality of life is knowing that all these needs are met at the right ratio for us to feel fulfilled and happy remember if in doubt prioritize your spiritual needs first personal growth and contribution will balance out the others personal growth and contribution balances out the others you've just done a lot an awesome key element in becoming not just successful, but being fulfilled. And we spoke about this at the very beginning of the seminar. You'll remember on day one and two and three, I spoke about this, I touched on it, and I said, sometimes there'll be massively successful people in wealth or business, but there'll be elements of their life where they do not feel fulfilled. And we learn this, I mean, just looking at some of our celebrities and people who are in the limelight, in the spotlight, how many of them suffer from depression? They've got wealth, they've got businesses, they've got success, they've got you know fame and people love them, and yet they're not happy. This is that ingredient, guys. This is that recipe of how do I live a fulfilled life? Because you can have all the success you want. You can have all the money and success in your career that you possibly want. But at the end of the day, if you've got no one to share it with, if you're not feeling happy, if you don't feel fulfilled, then you haven't succeeded yet. 
because we're not just talking about succeeding in one area of your life. We're talking about living a life of passion and purpose, a life you're excited about, a life that leaves a legacy that inspires other people to be brave, be courageous, and play full out and live their life to the full potential that they're capable of. It's a life you want to live that inspires people to try to be better, to elevate their life, to understand that with simple tools that they can apply to their life every day, they can really write their own destiny. But what happens? What happens when you go on the hero's journey and you succeed in your goals and this seminar ends and you've learned all these amazing things and you start to apply them to your life and magical things happen in your life? What happens then? What is the next thing for you? You know, you pay it forward to other people. So you do the full hero's journey. You pay forward what you've learned. You share monsters and mentors with all your friends and family. And they all get these tools and enhanced learning capabilities. But what happens to you next? Part of the hero's journey is understanding that once we've completed the hero journey, life doesn't stop there. It carries on. And we start another journey. And another one, and another one. Sometimes we can be doing three different heroes' journeys at once, and we can be at different stages in all areas of our life. That is what life is like. It's a wheel. There are layers. All those layers affect each other. And it can be amazing to attend a seminar like this, learn these amazing tools, apply to our life. And then what happens is that overwhelm once it comes back, and we start to wonder, but what's next? Like, I need something more. And as we've built that emotional resilience to slaying those monsters, we realize that there's another journey to go on, something that's bigger and broader than we ever thought. And so I'd like to give you guys, those of you who decided to be really brave and step into your courage zone and decided to show up for the seminar and play full out, you're going to be the first to hear about this new exclusive service that TBM is offering. We have not advertised this on any other platform. We haven't told anyone. Nobody knows. You're the first to know right here today. TBM this month, April 2024. We are going to be launching our TBM Inner Circle membership. What does this mean for you? If you've been feeling like you want to get coaching, like you need life coaching, you need leadership coaching, you need personal development coaching, but those big programs, it's just too much for you right now. But you know you need the value, okay? You know that you want it, you need the coaching, you want the coaching. This membership is going to provide you with the following. You're going to get once a month coaching with TBN, okay? So once a month coaching for one hour. It's going to be a group coaching session. We're going to get guest speakers on. So other experts, not just myself, we're going to get other experts in other fields so that this becomes your one-stop personal development platform where you can decide what do I need to focus on right now. We'll have different coaching sessions, okay? And you're going to choose as a community, as an inner circle community member, you're going to vote for what are we going to be coaching on each month, okay? We're going to discuss topics like business, wealth, health, and relationships. So those for me are the four elements that most of us usually need help in. And the other sort of, if we get help in those four, the other sort of fall into place in terms of our wheel of life. And so I'm going to be bringing in experts to help you with those things. So if you thought about starting your own business and the idea is there, but you're so scared and you don't know where to start, Inner Circle is for you. If you don't know where to start with your health, if you don't know how to start building your wealth, if you don't know how to fix your relationships, Inner Circle membership is for you. So you're going to get once a month, one hour group coaching with the community. They are going to be recorded. So if you're my people in the US, the UK, the Philippines, and Australia, first of all, thank you for showing up. I know who you are. You play for loud and I really appreciate it. But because your time zones are different, we are making sure that any member of the Inner Circle community, you get to have those recordings so that you can play it back in your time zone and do the action steps in your own time. Okay, we're also going to have exclusive members-only events. So we're going to have seminars just like this, a little bit bigger, more speakers, okay, more speakers, more topics. We're going to have other events that are also only going to be exclusive to 
the members only. So only the inner circle members, only you will have access to these events. Okay. Again, we're going to be pinpointing specific strategies, tools, methods, on how to be successful in all areas of your life. Each of the coaching sessions, okay, they're going to be recorded. We are then going to play them back to ourselves at the TBM, TBM Research Center. We will then take out the valuable lessons, create a workbook for you that you can listen to the coaching again and apply the action steps with your workbook. So it's not just going to be a mindless one hour of coaching. You're going to be present in the coaching, take notes. We're going to provide you with a recording and then we're going to send a workbook to you to say, these are the valuable lessons. These are the key takeaways. And this is how you can apply them to your life right now. What else is great about these coaching sessions and these exclusive members only events is they're going to be conducted via Zoom, which means at the end of each session, we're going to have time for you to actually talk to our guest speakers and ask them questions right then and there. So if you've listened and you're present and you're like, but I have a question on how to do X, Y, and Z, or how would you tackle this obstacle? You can ask the guest speaker and get that value and information right then and there. There's more. Of course there's more, because you know I'm all about giving you as much value as possible. So the other thing you're going to get, so you've got exclusive events, you've got once a month coaching on topics that you as a community choose, and nothing's to do, by the way. We'll talk anything, okay? We'll talk money, we'll talk business, we'll talk relationships, we'll talk health, anything, okay? So you'll get to be able to vote for those topics, and we'll bring in the experts. So coaching, exclusive events, bonus workbooks to action in those steps. You'll also get access to all the recordings. Okay. More. What more can we offer you? We're going to be offering you access to the private Facebook community of TBM in a circle. We will be sharing the links. We'll be sharing special posts, special articles, any new guest speakers coming on, and we'll be supporting you as a community. And if any of you grow in the community and want to come on as a guest speaker, we're going to allow that as well because we're going to learn from each other. That's part of the hero's journey is learning to become a mentor and inspiring others. So it is also an opportunity to grow yourself, not just as a human being, but in the community and in the world, in business, in wealth, health, and relationships. There's more. We're also going to have a private Telegram group. It's already set up. And so if you need that response, that daily motivation, that like check-in, and you need that connection, Remember, we all need connection. It's a human need. If you really feel that need to build connection with the community, you're also going to get access to the Inner Circle Telegram. Okay? So our Telegram group where you can chat, share links, motivate each other, share good days, share bad days. That is our social community where we're going to be available to each other and we're going to really build each other up. Okay? We'll also put exclusive deals in our Telegram chat. So you will say there's an event coming up. How many of you want to come? What are the topics you want to discuss? Which speakers would you like to see? So that you'll also have access to. There's one more thing. One more thing. You guys were so brave. And let me just say this. So many people saw the advert for the seminar and didn't decide to play full out. They decided not to commit to the journey yet. They refused the call to adventure. You guys were ready. You guys were ready to cross the threshold into a hero's journey and play full out and come to the seminar not knowing what you were fully in store for. Maybe you got a lot more than you bargained for. Maybe it was something completely different to what you thought. But no doubt, we all got a deep level of value from the last four days. But because of your bravery, I want to reward that. I want to reward your courage to step out of your comfort zone and try something different. And so... I'm giving it seven days, so seven days from when this event ends, so from tomorrow for seven days, I'm going to give each and every Inner Circle member a free copy of the TBM ebook. The ebook is called Seven Ways to Create a Life-Changing Breakthrough. It's a step-by-step -step guide in gaining momentum and building the pattern of creating a breakthrough in any area of your life. So if you join in the next seven days, you're going to get free access to that ebook. I'm so excited to see you guys there because there's nothing better 
than having one place to come to to find your inspiration, your personal development, your growth, and have people surround you in that community who only want you to succeed. And so, guys, with that, I'd just like to say thank you for showing up for the seminar. I want to say thank you for being brave and playing full out. And please, join the private Facebook group. Use these tools. Share your success with us. We'd love to hear from you. So if you're not following us already on our socials, follow us on our socials. Join the private group. Be part of the community and start doing something different so that you can start getting a better outcome in your life. And you know how we're going to end this off because there's only one way to end off a seminar, and that's in a peak state. So are you ready? If you're capable, please stand up out of your chair. Let's start the Thank you so much, guys. You've been amazing. The last four days have been great. I really enjoyed seeing you around, guys. I've had a super